This month, the three blind mice, Lee, George, and Paul, have invited all of us to join them in the build of a 72 Ford Ranchero. I had a 65 El Camino. It was my first car when I was growing up. And I was always more partial to the uh, Chevys. But I'd take this Ranchero now if I, if I had the opportunity. I had this casting already. Uh, and you may notice the uh, old uh, bench, the pad I'm working on is from older videos because it's before I swapped it out. I had this casting and had taken it apart and planned to do something with it at some point, And I just hadn't got around to it. And then they announced that uh, this was one of the cars this year. And I... Uh, I couldn't have worked out better for me. So uh, I had it ready to go as far as uh, taken apart and stripped. So here you see it. It comes apart. There's not a lot to it. Uh, it's a plastic base. The wheels on this one, I end up taking off. But you're going to see them turn up in another video here shortly. Uh, but I knew I wanted to use these wheels. This is uh, the Hot Wheels Super Deluxe, the Back to the Future for lack of a better way of putting it, poop mobile. That's the poop up there at the top. <clears throat> Excuse me, it just comes right off. Uh, the car that remains is a nice looking car. Uh, this had real riders on it, it has a metal base. So I took it apart, stole the wheels off of this, and I kind of lucked out. Uh, the wheels didn't need to be modified in any way, they just come off of this and drop right into the Ranchero. I like the look of this, to be honest with you. I was halfway tempted just to clear coat it right there and go, done. <laughs> I, I thought this looked good with the white walls. Um, naturally, I wasn't going to leave it at this, but it had a darn good look. The, the casting on this is kind of a bear. At, at least mine was. I, I don't know about anybody else, but... Uh, the casting was really rough, and in particular, I had a spot here on the back bumper where, I don't know if it was just a little extra metal, or, or if all the castings have it, or it's a, a flaw in manufacturer, a flaw in the casting, I don't know, but the, the back bumper really didn't fit well on this. So I just uh, worked away and worked away at it so I could get that to be acceptable. And, uh, you know, naturally the rest of the casting need, needed filing, too, and, you know, the, the, the usual. Now, I I love Rancheros and El Caminos. They, they've always seemed like the ideal car to me. I, you know, I, maybe, maybe I'm a little biased because it was my first car. But it's so handy to be able to throw anything you want in the back of it, and it's still a car. It's still a... You're not sitting way up in the air, although later I ended up having a Chevy truck and I love sitting up high in the air. But uh, that being said, I think back to that El Camino and, and that just seemed great. Uh, you can throw anything you want in the back, not have to worry about it. You know, you want to carry a sheet of plywood, you can. You want to throw some boards back there, you can. You want to throw some bricks back there, you can. And I... I tried to do that with cars since then and you know I've I've shoved an amazing amount of crap in cars when I've moved uh, various things around but uh, there's something about these I had an uncle that had a ranchero that it was an odd color but uh, he loved that car he was a general contractor so it was fun seeing him run around in that thing too but you know, back to this. You know, the, the casting did need a lot of work. But yeah, that that's part of the fun. It's getting them ready to go. I end up doing this in uh, in seventies kind of colors. So there, I hit it with the dupla color base coat, the metallic base coat, because I am going with the dupla color metal cast paint on this. And this one is fairly reminiscent of another one that I've done, but 
Anyhow, I wanted to get the chrome off the base on here, and recently Jeff over at uh, 164 Revival used this process where he used a liquid mask to cover the bumpers on a car and to select what he wanted, what chrome he wanted to remain when he then dips this in lime away to, to get rid of the chrome. And, uh, or super clean, excuse me. Uh, not lime away. <laughs> it, it is a plastic base. Well, he, uh, he had a much thicker liquid mask. And this one here, I'm not sure why I had it. It's from Vallejo, this one. But it's really thin. And that worked against me. Or at least I thought it was going to work against me. Where the one Jeff had, it was a lot thicker. And in, in the future, if I go to do this again, which I can see I will, I definitely want to try. Well, once this runs out, which will probably be 50 years from now. But uh, I, I want to use something thicker. And it actually works really well. I, I didn't show it there, but you throw that after the, the liquid mask dries into the super clean. And it strips off everywhere that you didn't have the liquid mask. So it, it worked out great. It was a great tip. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, now here, I'm hand brushing Citadel black paint over the the or silver base coat. And what I realized way back when I did Scrappy the shop truck, I used the same approach. I put down that metallic base coat and then you're able to get away with hand painting the Citadel black or really probably any color you want um, onto that base coat. And, and you know, I do it well. I, I It's not like I just it kind of looks like I'm slopping it on there and it is the first coat, but I do put multiple coats. And it's interesting how when you then put the Duplicolor metal cast paint, it's a tinted metallic clear for lack of a better way of describing it. When you put that over it, it in a way levels out, it evens out the hand painted areas and they look a hell of a lot better than they did before you put the color coat over them. They give it, um, they give the hand painted areas a much better look. So it, what I learned on Scrappy the Shop Truck is it gave me a lot more flexibility in detailing some of these cars. You'll notice I did use masking tape, uh, the Tamiya, real thin, a little great masking tape. Uh, on the hood area because I definitely wanted the straight lines. Didn't need to use that in the bed of the truck. I toyed with the idea of painting the tailgate center black, but I I had some willpower. I didn't do that. This thing is really a throwback to the 70s. That this this paint job is the way it would look in the 70s if I had this car at the time. If I were to have it now, I wouldn't paint it in these colors. I would probably have it a, a gray primerish color. Might even black out the trim. And uh, might be a flat gray, thinking about it. It'd probably be like a flat gray. And uh, I'd either chrome it out or black out the trim. And it'd be tempting to keep the white walls on there. Because I did like the look of those white walls. And, and you may think I'm crazy, but it, it was appealing to me. So here, yeah, I'm wearing a glove. <laughs> Just to keep any of the grease and oil and slime on my hands from getting on that paint. But I did touch up some areas. Just to make sure the black coverage was good. It, it was important. Here's those those wheels and tires again. And I came to the conclusion that I wanted to flip them. That I didn't want the white walls showing. So I just flipped. They're real riders. I just flipped the tires on the wheels. 
And, you know, th those of you who have been around as long as I have remember doing this to our cars years ago. I mean, hell, the, the 65 El Camino I had, had, uh, it wasn't white walls, but uh, it had raised white letter tires that I flipped onto the inside because I just wanted the solid, uh, solid black walls. And that one back then had baby moon head cup caps hub caps woo, hub caps on it and, uh, damn i love that car to 327 in it um so i did bust out the sharpie paint pin and detailed the base i do end up touching up the chrome the process uh, of using the liquid mask worked great. It would have worked even better if I had a thicker liquid mask. But as you can see, it, you know the, the chrome really held up well. It was protected. It just needed to be touched up a little bit. It pretty much needed to be touched up even before I had done anything to it. So throw in some detailing. It's kind of the same pipes I had on the El Camino. <laughs> of course, that thing had glass packs on it. I don't know if any of you remember glass packs, but uh, there was a muffler shop here in town, a buddy of my dad's. Carl's muffler shop that you'd take it to and Carl would make your car sound fantastic. So I remember having glass packs on that thing, and that thing just sounded mean. Got the Molotow pin. You have to do this quick, because the once the Molotow paint starts to dry, you're going to have problems if you try and go over it, unless you let it completely dry. It's that in-between point where you, you have to be careful. There were quite a few little spots that needed to be touched up. I'd like to take a moment right now to thank the three blind mice, Lee, George, and Paul, for having these events. They're a lot of fun. They get a, th This month has a fantastic turnout. I can't believe how many people are doing this little car. It's wonderful can't wait to see all of the other builds. I'll have links down below to the three blind mice. And uh, from there, you can uh, follow over to all of the other builds. There you see it with the red metal cast paint. And I uh, detailed the rear lights. Got out of all colors, Citadel Rise of Rust. I did the, uh, the amber lights for the front with that paint, and then now I'm hitting it with a little Nuln Oil, also from Citadel. It's basically a black wash for the front grill. You'll see me get out toothpicks now and then, and earlier you saw it on the base too. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll use the toothpicks a lot of times to clean up areas where maybe I didn't want paint. And I'll, I'll use, also use them like there you can see I'm adding a little more of the wash with the, the toothpick. Yep, there's the gauzy. You knew there was going to be gauzy in this video. The uh, amber or whatever color you want to call that glass. I was happy, it, it wasn't a terrible color, so I was happy that it looks good against the red of the uh, 
metal cast paint. Again, the paint is all rattle canned. Rattle can paint, rattle can clear coat, rattle canned everything. So now it's time to throw this puppy together. The glass is very tiny, got the interior. And there you can see uh, the tires from the, uh, the Super Deluxe, like I said before, drop right in. You know, I just uh, used a dab of super glue on each, uh, each axle to hold it in place in the center. At first, uh, I was putting the washers to line it up, you know, just to give me a little added body to it to let those screws grab in. And the fact that I have a boatload of these washers, <laughs> that's one of the, the nice things about doing these cars. I ended up, as you see, kicking the washers out of there. I didn't need them after all. Sometimes I think I'm too tempted to use them because I do. I have a boatload of them that I got off eBay or Amazon. One of the nice things about doing tiny cars is you spend a few dollars and you get hundreds of these parts. So <laughs> it can be a very inexpensive hobby if you're looking for something to do on a budget. It's great. Um, at the same time, you can run up a fortune, <laughs> uh, depending upon the parts you're buying and, and what you're doing. As you can see, that thing rolls like a demon. Look at that thing. I mean, the wheels dropped in beautifully. I couldn't have asked for uh, an easier wheel swap. There's the Ranchero as it started. And, you know... the. The one thing I wish I could do are clear coats that looked like that. I'm still fighting clear coats. But uh, once I get airbrushing, I think it'll it'll ease up a little. I also have uh, a can of something I'm going to try that's on its way. There you see the finished product. My 72 Ford Ranchero. I think it looks mean. That's what I was after. we were back in 72 right now or if I was back in high school with this car that's how I would have wanted it to look at the time again today I probably would have it a gray color maybe with black accents those wheels would stay the same though It'd be the same damn wheels on there so uh Again, thank you very much to the Three Blind Mice. Thank you very much to all of the other builders that participate in this. All of you make it what it is. You know, it's the between the Three Blind Mice and all of the other builders, you all make this a real joy. Hopefully, uh, the viewers of this also go and check out all of the other builds. You're going to see some fantastic things out there. There are some magnificent builders out there. So I hope you like this one. I hope you subscribe to the channel. To my subscribers uh, that have already uh, joined up. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support. Everyone stay safe out there. And uh, have fun with these things. See you in the next one.